All right, one more, and hopefully the last one on uh, multicolored buttons. And it has to do with the appearance of the button when you click it. Now, we point out last time the toggle button, uh, w when clicked, you can apply a different CSS provider to the button and change the color. Now, when you go back, that would be depressed. It's darker uh, light. You can develop any, any kind of convention you want. But when you press it again, you go back to the same, uh, the same callback routine and you can reset the, uh, the CSS provider. Um, the other issue there involves regular buttons. Now, in the, up to this point, regular buttons, you click them, nothing happened. I mean, well, something happened. You got the, um, the effect. Uh, they were clicked, but you didn't see any visual effect. Now, in standard uh, Glade GTK, you do see a momentary uh, change in the appearance of the button indicating it has been clicked. And that is not the case um, up to this point with the colored buttons because you've modified the CSS. There's probably a way to restore it, but I don't know what it is. But here is a simple way to do it so that when you click it, you'll see a momentary um, change in appearance. Um, somewhat variable in length there. But anyway, you do see a change in appearance that's taking place. All right, how did I do that? The change like that, It's uh, sometimes it's quicker and sometimes you'll see why in a moment. All right, first, uh, what basically is going to happen is when you click the button, it goes to the callback routine on button clicked, and then you change the CSS provider and you set a flag indicating it's been changed. Then you also have a timer the timer comes on, in this case, where I've done it, once every second. And the timer can look to see if there are any flags that have been set true, and if they have, to reset the button back to its original state. So up to one set for up to one second, the button will have a slightly different appearance. Now, how do we do that? I don't think I did timers before. That's why I'm doing this. All right, here is the code. It's all the same as before. I've kind of put a few more comments in it. Um, this was the original button. Uh, excuse me, this is the original uh, button provider. The original button's up here. It's, it hasn't changed. It's button one. None of these have changed. This is the CSS provider area. I had one uh, called CSS BTN1. That's the regular. I've added to it BTN1A. Followed the same convention I used with the um, previously with the um, toggle button. I just added, I created a new name and added A to the ending of it. And this will be the checked version of it. Now, going down here, I've also added definition of a callback routine, uh, the timer handler. You can call it anything you want, well, up to, up to a limit. It returns a Boolean, G Boolean. Um, so declare it. You'll need it. I mean, you have to declare it before you use it or, you know, define it before you use it. Okay, I've also got a global flag called FLG button 1, and I set it initially to 0. This is the flag I mentioned before. All right, going further down, and um, okay, uh, there was the original CSS button one, and here's the CSS button one A. All right, as I get the pointer to the provider. Now, in the, I've spaced these out a little bit for clarity, but otherwise the content is the same. There is the original code there for, change, for making the regular click button uh, a different color. And that, as such, doesn't cause the button to change. Well, here is the provider for the altered button, the one that will indicate it's been clicked. Now, you notice I apply the CSS because the normal state is this state here, and I apply it to the uh, to the button using that function CSS set from last time. Uh, but that, that sets the button up in its normal state. Here is the provider, which is a global pointer. Um, CSS button 1A is a global, uh, but it's being set in this routine before you enter into the um, into the full screen um, or the window uh, appearance mode. Anyway, all I did here is change it from, this was yellow, uh, royal blue. I just changed it to completely royal blue. You can do anything you want, but it's different. All right. Now, um, so in other words, I've added one more CSS provider, and it's a slightly different color for... Um, the, um, the regular clickable button. Here is where I add the timer. G timeout add seconds. This is part of glib. Uh, and I'm adding one second. Now there's other units of time 
I could add two seconds, four seconds, five seconds. It means it, it'll be called once every one second, every two seconds, every three seconds, whatever number you put there. You can have multiple timers. You can have fractions of seconds. There's another function. I think it's U-timeout. It's a slightly different name function. Um, if you look up G-timeout add seconds, you can find the other function that adds um, milliseconds. Uh, but obviously, uh, unitary seconds are more efficient. Um, okay, and what do you pass to? Well, you pass to it the how often it should be it, it should tick. And you add to it the name of the function that will be called for each tick. And the name of the function, I've called it timer handler. You can call it what you want. And you cast it to be a G source function. All right, so there's the name of the function. And this is for arguments. You can have uh, the timer pass arguments to the function. Uh, and this is where you put them. You look at the documentation if you want to have functions being passed. But if everything's sort of global or the way I do it, um, not everything, but a lot of things, a lot of important things, uh, there's no need to pass, um, pass any uh, arguments. You might want to pass arguments in the odd case where you fork your routine. The timer is still running, but only in one in the parent. The, the timer is not running in the child, but you want to pass data from the child to the parent timer, in which case you would have to pass a pointer to a structure that is in shared memory so that the forked child can modify the uh, contents of the structure uh, and it would be visible to the parent and the parent could pass that directly into the um, in, into the uh, timer function. I've done it. It's, it's unlikely that you wouldn't want to do it. But anyway, no, no, no arguments. Bottom line, no arguments. All right, everything else is the same until I have my timer handler. There's not much to it. It returns a Boolean, true or false. And I have exactly, let me put a space there. Um, I have exactly uh, one thing in it. It tests to see if flag button one is true. If it is, it sets it to be false. It applies CSS uh, button one to button one, BTN one to button one. In other words, back to normal. And it tells it to redraw that section of the screen, redraw draw that window um, containing uh, button one. I have to use the actual name because they're not being passed down. They're not. In other places, I just use the argument it was a B, but it was the argument, of course, to the button itself. But here, I have to use the actual name of the of the button, and that resets the button. Now, I return true. If you return false, that ends the timer. It won't be called again. Uh, when you return true, the timer will continue to click. If you want the timer to die, return false. Um, all right. Uh, here is the, here's button one clicked down here, um, this section right here. Uh, it's, pr it's pretty much the same as, well, it's the same as before, except for one thing. I set the flag to one. I apply that alternative CSS code to the button. In other words, I've darkened it. I've changed its color. It'll be momentarily reset within a second. That's why you got variable amount of time. In some cases, it was almost a full second. In other cases, it was less than a second. That timer is clicking. There might be some way of smoothing it out. I don't know what. You could um, you could possibly make a, the, a flag button to be a counter and set it to like five, and then set the timer up so it's coming in uh, at, at um, you know five times a second, and uh, you could decrement it until it gets to zero, so you're guaranteed you got five clicks or uh, five um, sub-clicks, uh, 200 millisecond clicks, um, on the on the timer. I don't know if that's really worth it. It, it. it button changed appearance, albeit briefly. It doesn't matter, I think, to most users. But anyway, so that redraws it. Then I've got the thing as before. And um, it compiles. And there it is. And you see um, this guy is before, and you see the over there on the other screen things are happening. And there's a nice full second. And that was a short one. Uh, but anyway, it did change. You could tell it was clicked, even if it's if it's long or uh, short, doesn't really matter. But there was a momentary change. Going to quicker uh, timer intervals and, and rather than one second does increase your overhead. And you've got to kind of wonder if you really want to do that. Uh, once every second, I find that's a good sweeper time because a lot of other things I use my timer for uh, to check if certain things that have happened yet or if they're still taking place. For example, when I kick off a music uh, video or something like that, I come, back, come up once a second and say, are you still playing? Because they tend to play asynchronously. 
if you're into the VLC library, for example. Okay, so there you go. There's a way of uh, getting back the uh, responsiveness uh, for regular buttons. And this, this would apply to almost anything else. You could use a timer to, um, to modify the appearance.